I lick my brain in silence. Boom, ba, bum, bum, bum. Rather squeeze my head instead. Boom, ba, bum, bum, bum. Midget man provoking violence. Boom, ba, bum, bum, bum. Listen not to what I said. Boom, ba, Bum, 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 bum. I said, please calm it down. Everything is turning brown. Mutilated lips give a kiss on the wrist of the worm like tips of tentacles expanding in my mind. I'm fine, accepting only fresh brine. You can get another drop of this. Yeah, you wish. Mutilated lips give a kiss on the wrist of the worm Like tips of tentacles expanding in my mind I'm fine accepting only fresh brine You can get another drop of this, yeah you wish <laughs> Welcome back to That Thing with James J. Asher II. I'm your host, James J. Asher II. And today, we're talking mollusks on Molly, baby. I came across this article like last week or the week before, and I haven't read it. I skimmed over it, so we're going to dive into this article together for the first real time. Uh, real quick. If you want to help support the show, you can do so by becoming a Patreon patron at patreon.com slash that thing with James. You can donate like five bucks a month or more if you want, or a little bit less if you want. Uh, any donations go a huge way to help support the show. So again, that's patreon.com slash that thing with James. Uh, if you want to follow me online on like Instagram and Twitter, my handle is at James J. Asher. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else? I've got a subreddit I created, r slash that thing with James. Uh, if you have questions, if you are in need of advice, if you have uh, suggestions, ideas for like topics or stories to cover on the show, send me an email at that thing with James at gmail.com. Uh, la la la. Let's uh, dive into this episode. First, I am recording this on Sunday, December 13th, 2002. It is currently 4 39 p.m. So I'm considering this my birthday weekend because my birthday is in two days, December 15th, Tuesday this year. So I know the last episode I was like in a, in a flippant manner, tossing away saying like, Oh, this is my, my birthday episode. Well, this one's actually closer to my birthday uh, upon recording. So I'm recording this on my birthday weekend. So this is going to be a bit shorter episode so I can get back to playing cyberpunk 2077, the best game I've played in a long fucking time. Are there glitches? Yes, but that's it's it's a it's a brand new fucking game, and it's a huge game, and glitches get patched. All right, there's a lot of people flipping out over it. It's getting fucking patched. CD Projekt Red already put out like a 18 gig patch uh, for you know version 1.04 patch, and that fixed a lot of stuff. The game, my game, hasn't crashed since patching that, and they're going to continue to patch it up. So, you know, that little thing aside, it's nothing like game breaking wrong with it, and it is just so 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 fucking good. I'll probably do a deeper review on it once I finish like the main story in the game. But I got to say, I am loving it the way I, it, it's a real fucking RPG uh, it, as far as just like narrative story options and everything. It's it's so good and just a completely original genius revolutionary um, set design for just the the whole environment it's fucking amazing i love it i love it so much and i can't wait to get back to playing it so that said since this is my birthday weekend i'm gonna make this a little bit shorter episode 
I say that now and I've said that in previous episodes and they ended up being fucking long. So uh, I'm intending for this to be a short episode, but without further ado, let's dive in. Uh, so first, the song I sang for this uh, uh, just a bit ago is called Mutilated Lips by a band called Ween on an album called, I think it's called The Mollusk, which I thought was, was fitting because Ween is, well, <laughs> it's drug music. For, for drug people and uh, and the mollusk, you know, you know it's, it's like an octopus, I, I'm pretty sure. Is, is an octopus a mollusk? Is an octopus a mollusk? Let's see here. Is an octopus a mollusk? Octopus, plural octopuses or octopi. See, what's the fuck, which is it? Is it octopi or octopuses? I heard, I've always said octopi, but then recently I saw someone, some article saying, well, actually it's octopuses, which makes no fucking sense. You don't say cactuses, you say cacti, uh, for, you know, plural of cactus. So let's see, in general, anar, eight-armed cephalopod, mollusk. Okay, yeah, it's a mollusk. I think the thing that makes it a mollusk is it's got that like beak or whatever. Uh, yeah, so the album's called The Mollusk, and the lyrics talks about, you know, um, tentacles expanding in my mind, um, and then taking drops. <laughs> I've always assumed that it's like drops of acid. Uh, so yeah, we've got drugs, we've got mollusks, we've got ween, and it's all going to converge on this article that hopefully doesn't suck. It's in the Atlantic. Uh, so let's dive into it. Title. What ecstasy does to octopuses, despite their wacky brains? These intelligent animals seem to respond to the drug in a very similar way to humans. Written by Ed Yong. Uh, September, published September 20th, 2018. Let me take a drink of my beverage before we dive in. I don't want to do too much of the um, NPR mouth noise because um, I hate it and I hate having to hear other people fucking chew loudly. So I'm going to try to reduce the mouth noise by wetting my whistle. Mmm. 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 When Gull Dolan, I think that's how it's pronounced, it's got the umlaut over the U and the O. When Gum, Gull Dolan first gave ecstasy to octopuses, she didn't know what to expect. Dolan is a neuroscientist at the Johns Hopkins School for Medicine who studies how the cells and chemicals in the animal brains influence animals' social lives. Ecstasy, also known as MDMA, aka Molly, interests her because it's known to make people feel more sociable, more interested in others, less defensive. The same effects also occur in rats and mice, the animals that Dolan usually studies. But octopuses are very different creatures. They're clearly intelligent, and their behavior is undoubtedly sophisticated, but their brains have a completely different architecture from those mammals, from those of mammals. For one thing, they're shaped like donuts, quote, it's much more like a snail's brain than ours, Dolan says. With such a dissimilar anatomy, she wondered whether these animals would respond to drugs in unpredictable ways. And to find out, she needed a way of assessing how sociable an octopus is. She and her colleague, Eric Edsinger, put five California two-spotted octopuses individually into the middle of three connected chambers and gave them free reign to explore. One of the adjacent chambers housed a second octopus confined inside an overturned plastic basket. The other contained an unfamiliar object. Uh, 
such as a plastic flower or, or a Chewbacca figurine. <laughs> Nerds. Dolan and Edzinger measured how long the main animal spent in the company of its peer and how long with the random toy. Okay, so they've been testing MDMA on mammals, and now they want to test it on something with a different neural uh, biological architecture, which, by the way, octopuses are incredibly intelligent beings. Uh, They're just fucking crazy. Like, they can fit through a hole the size of a quarter, and just like they can do amazing things like if there's any like three-dimensional physical thing that might possibly be or came from outer space like be an extraterrestrial that's living on earth it's got to be octopi or octopuses whichever you want to fucking call it and they are incredible and and they can problem solve like they can fit into a jar with a lid on it it can unscrew the lid of the jar get out go over to the next jar unscrew that lid and get in and then screw the lid back on top like screw itself back into the jar Uh, for example they are incredibly intelligent dare i say probably more intelligent than dolphins and as far as i know uh, unlike dolphins octopi are not serial rapists male dolphins are rapists through and through plus um if a dolphin has an option to rape a human or rape another dolphin they'll go for the human they are more attracted to humans dolphins are more attracted to humans than they are other dolphins i don't know if that's the same case for uh octopi or not sorry if you're hearing crinkling in the background uh it's because i have plastic up on the windows because this place is drafty and has no insulation so i got to do whatever i can to keep the apartment warm in the colder months um and when it's extra windy they tend to crinkle so if you hear that crinkling noise in the background i apologize back to the article okay where did we leave off uh dolan and nc Ed Singer measured how long the main animal spent in the company of its peer and how long with the random toy. This is exactly the kind of setup that neuroscientists use to test social behavior in mice, but Dolan had no idea whether it would work with octopuses. Quote, It might be that they are so smart that the kind of task we'd use for a mouse would be boring to them, she said. Maybe they'd take one lap around the chamber and stop, end quote. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. The free-moving individuals thoroughly explored the chambers, and from their movements, Dolan realized that individuals of any sex gravitate toward females but avoid males interesting next she dosed the animals with ecstasy okay so they were sober beforehand all right they were getting a baseline to do a comparative study here so they got the baseline they got the control next she dosed the animals with ecstasy again there's no precedent for this But researchers often anesthetize octopuses by dunking them in ethanol. What? What? They just get dunk them in straight ethanol? I guess they have such a high water content, it doesn't damage them. I hope. Does that just fucking knock, just get them blackout drunk? Okay, let's read that again. Again, there's no precedent for this, but researchers often anesthetize octopuses by dunking them in alcohol, a humane procedure with no lasting side effects. So, Dolan and Edsinger submerged their octopuses, holy shit, in an MDMA solution, allowing them to absorb the drug through their gills. How did they work out the dose for that? At first, they used too high a dose. (laughs) Oh, my God. At first, they used too high a dose. And the animals, quote, freaked out and did all these color changes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because octopi can, like, 
change their colors like chameleons, but even more effective than chameleons. Yet again, amazing creatures. It's so advanced. Uh, so at first they used a, a too high a dose and the animals quote freaked out and did all these color changes Dolan says but once the team found a more suitable dose the animals behaved more calmly and sociably with ecstasy in their systems the five octopuses spent far more time in the company of the same trapped male they once shunned even without a stopwatch, the change was obvious. Before the drug, they explored the chamber with the other octopus very tentatively. Quote, they mashed themselves against one wall, very slowly extended one arm, touched the other animal, and went back to the other side, Dolan says. But when they had MDMA, they had this very relaxed posture. They floated around, they wrapped their arms around the chamber, and they interacted with the other octopus in a much more fluid and generous way. They even exposed their underside, where their mouth is, which is not something octopuses usually do." End quote. But most octopuses, with some exceptions, are solitary hermits, and Jennifer Mather from the University of Lethbridge isn't convinced that ecstasy is making them sociable. Instead, the drug might just mess with their ability to detect the chemical cues of potential mates. Quote, there's no proof that it is anything more than attraction, she says. Uh, is this lady... Is this lady, uh, is she a square? Is she being a square right now? Is she being a party pooper? Is she being a wet blanket? Is she being piss on a parade? Come on. Don't, don't, don't harsh the mellow, you know? Don't, don't harsh their trip, man. Harriet DeWitt from the University of Chicago, who has studied ecstasy's effects on animals, has other concerns. Quote, it's an innovative and exciting study, she says, but it's unfortunate that the duo always tested the octopuses uh, first after a dunk in normal salt water and then after an ecstasy bath. It's unfortunate that the duo always tested the, in that in pharmacological and pharma. In pharmacology studies, scientists normally mix up the order in which the animals receive the drug and the saline control. Without that counterbalancing, it's hard to say why the octopuses were behaving differently the second time around. Okay, that makes sense. Was it because of the ecstasy? Or simply because they had become familiar with the arena, the plastic toy, or the other octopus. Dolan admits that the study is just a pilot, and one with a very small sample size. Quote, we would obviously want other people to try and repeat it in a much larger group of animals, she says. But we wanted to publish it because they're really aren't established protocols for delivering drugs to octopuses or doing social tests with them. She hopes that her findings will encourage more neuroscientists to study these beguiling animals. Okay, so an octopus is rolling. I'm seeing it's got eight arms, and that means it can hold eight glow sticks. <laughs> <sighs> I'd go to an octopus rave. That sounds awesome. Awesome. Octopus rave. Octa rave. Uh, Rus, octo, octo, yeah, octo rave. I love this disco. You are for disco. I love a disco. You are down. 
We go out. We go disco. I feel so love. I feel so love for you. We are complete. I am so open. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. I have love for you. I've never felt such love. I've never seen someone so beautiful. Oh, oh, your face is so smooth. Oh, my, oh my God. You're so smooth. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh yes, oh. I feel the waves, they are waves of disco passing through my synergy. Act a wave, act a wave, act a wave, act a wave. She's not the first to make such a call either. In 1964, the English zoologist Jay-Z Young, Jay-Z? <laughs> Young Jay-Z wrote a book called A Model of the Brain, in which he encouraged scientists to study the brains of a wide variety of species, octopuses included. Quote, we could say that the octopus brain is totally different to a human one, but we need to this synapse or neurotransmitter, Dolan says. We could write down a list of these minimal building blocks of complex behavior, end quote. And that's what she and Ed Singer have started doing. They knew that ecstasy works by causing neurons to release serotonin, a signaling chemical that affects our mood. The drug does that by sticking to a protein called the serotonin transporter, or CERT, which neurons normally use to suck up the chemical. Ecstasy's presence reverses that flow, creating a massive mood-altering dump of serotonin. Octopuses have their own version of CERT, and Dolan and Edsinger showed that it's just a 50% match to ours. Despite these differences, the specific bit of the protein that sticks to ecstasy is almost identical in both species, which is why the drug affects both. Quote, we weren't expecting it to have quite so much overlap, Dolan says. Octopuses really are the best sample we have on Earth of a second intelligence, says uh, Robin, Robin Crook. Robin Crook, a neuroscientist from San Francisco State University. We last shared a common ancestor with them around 800 million years ago, and their brains have evolved independently from ours. And yet, Dolan's study showed that our brains have a few extreme similarities, from the molecular level to the behavioral one. It strengthens the idea, Crook says, that, quote, Excuse me. There are only so many ways to skin a cat. I'm kidding. There are only so many ways to make an intelligent brain. And that's it. Ed Yong is a staff writer at The Atlantic where he covers science. So I thought that was pretty fucking cool. How about you? What do you think about um, mollusks on Molly? In case you don't know, Molly's a slang name for MDMA. Um, I've done a lot of that. <laughs> I got to say, uh, let me take a quick drink. And I've got something to say about um, the clinical use of um, psychoactives like MDMA and um, LSD and psilocybin. I'll be right back. And I'm back. <clears throat> now, I am most certainly not a libertarian. However, uh, I do believe that the concept of, like, the United States has a, a drug scheduling list or matrix or whatever. Uh, the, the idea of, like, making these drugs sort of illegal in a way is, uh, it's dumb. It's just flat out dumb on a 
long li- for for a long list of reasons, um, as far as like health, as far as uh, crime, poverty, all this stuff, um, and even uh, Portugal has had great, 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 great success uh, in decriminalizing. Like I think it's all drugs. I think it is. I don't feel like looking it up right now, but I know that they've had they decriminalized all sorts of stuff. They gave uh, drug users, um, safe places to, uh, to purchase clean drugs and use clean paraphernalia and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm not saying like go out and get hooked on heroin, but for people that are, uh, having a safe space like that, it greatly reduces, uh, the, it improve it reduces health risks. It reduces overdose risks. It reduces death, and just just the idea of uh, having illegal drugs and having a war on drugs has ruined so 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 many lives. And it was in an an inherently uh, political. It it was an overtly political move on behalf of Nixon to start a war on drugs. Um, it was particularly directed towards the, um, towards brown people, towards the black population specifically, and towards like young, open-minded white people, the hippies and stuff like that. Um, so there's that reason, but also for scientific purposes, by having like schedule one drugs and stuff be just flat out illegal, um, it makes it impossible for researchers to, well, research the drug, to learn more about it, to possibly um, come up with other uh, syntheses of the drug to see if they can derive it into other types of pharmaceuticals uh, that may have, you know, antidepressant effects without all the um, negative side effects that say like an SSRI or SS. NRI, that sort of stuff has. Um, maybe it can have the effect like Xanax has, but without being super fucking addictive the way um, barbiturates are. Um, is it is it barbiturate? Yeah, I think Xanax is a barbiturate. Uh, and it just... It's just really dumb on a lot of levels to have drugs completely illegal like that. And I think we're missing out on a lot of knowledge that could be good for the world. Um, Pharmaceutically, legally, uh, so on and so forth. Well, uh, some other places. I forget if it's Sweden or Switzerland, but one of the places has been doing for a number of years uh, research of um, um, MDMA and psilocybin and LSD, DMT, just uh, psychoactive drugs on people who have PTSD, on people with very severe depression, on people who are having end-of-life anxiety and depression. And they've found pretty consistently that uh, the application of these drugs in a safe, controlled, therapeutic environment has proven to help people a fucking lot, Um, particularly like ecstasy on people with PTSD. It has shown to have huge huge benefits, like give the person MDMA and have like a therapist in the room there for a person to talk, talk through the experience with them. And, um, and they found that it has greatly reduced all sorts of like the bad stuff that PTSD, uh, causes a person. Um, and it's helped people. I remember reading a few years ago about, uh, Uh, some research on the application of psilocybin on people with end of life, uh, anxiety and depression, uh, people who, you know, maybe they got cancer or something like they know they've got like a year to live or anything, something like that. And they found that maybe like one trip will basically make them not so anxious uh, and not nearly as depressed or depressed at all for 
sometimes a couple months, sometimes a whole fucking year, um, simply because, well, the trip offered them uh, an experience that offered a perspective that they needed to sort of come to terms with and accept and learn how to live with this incredibly uh, difficult shit they had to deal with. And um, I'm not saying that, you know, these psychs are end all be all cure all for everybody in every particular situation. But uh, I, I do think that um, researchers should have the liberty to do more studies on these drugs. Uh, and it's great to see uh, stuff like magic mushrooms getting decriminalized in a few states. I, kn I know the city of Denver decriminalized it. Was it like Massachusetts decriminalized them too? I th fuck, I think even Oklahoma might be doing it now. Who fucking knows? Oklahoma of all places. Plus they're expanding Medicaid now and they've got medical marijuana. Am I going to have to move back to Oklahoma? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I, ca I can say from firsthand experience, um, I've experimented with stuff and I can say flat out that it has improved my life, my perspective. Uh, it, I, I can't quantify it. It's just, um, I remember back in my late teens and early twenties, I was, uh, pretty, like, I was pretty depressed. Um, I've thankfully not been like clinically diagnosed with like chemical depression. Um, I have been diagnosed with a general anxiety for sure. Um, but I was pretty depressed and like, I never tried to commit suicide, but I used to think about it a lot. Is the term suicidal ideation, is that what it is? I used to think about it a, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, I was not in a good place. Um, and then I had an experience and a few more experiences. And um, I have never thought about hurting myself ever since then. Like, uh, it was... You know, revelatory. It gave me perspective on shit that I was worrying about, shit that I didn't even realize I was worrying about, um, just in, in terms of life and time, um, you know, feeling like I had to do this and I only had this long to do this. And am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And is now the right time? And am I failing? And just a, a million and a half different things. But um, it's good to see that they're testing it on mollusks, too. Uh, it would not surprise me. I, I mean, I understand that the article we read was um, talking about a, a pilot uh, research, but I would not be surprised if they found, if they continued with testing, if they found that molly did indeed affect mollusks in a in the same way it does humans. Um, so yeah, if you got PTSD, Molly can help you. How about that? It's not evil. It's not evil. Just don't be fucking dumb. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think this is long enough. Uh, I don't have anything else to say. It's my birthday weekend. By the time this comes out, I will already be 33 years old. Good God, I'm seven years away from being 40. Oh, 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 well, I'm going to go play some Cyberpunk 2077. I love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you can, and if you want, become a patron at patreon.com slash that thing with James. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.